Your freedom to vote. Your freedom to love who you love. And your freedom to choose. It's a decision over turning Roe v. Wade, as you heard earlier tonight. The United States Supreme Court majority wrote the following, quote, women are not without electrical, without, not allowed, not without electoral, electoral or political power. No kidding. MAGA Republicans found out the power of women in 2022. And Donald Trump is going to find out the power of women in 2024. Watch. And we're Trump. And as mega Republican right wingers seek to erase history, we Democrats continue to write history and make more history. I'm proud. I'm proud to have kept my commitment to appoint the first black woman in the United States Supreme Court. Katanji Brown Jackson, a symbol for every young woman in America that you can do anything. I'm proud that I've kept my commitment to have an administration that looks like America and that taps in to the full talent of our nation most diverse cabinet in history, including the first black woman in South Asian descent to serve as vice president. And will soon serve as the 47th president of the United States. She is good. Look. Thank you, Kamala. Folks, I've long said we have many obligations as a nation. But I got in trouble years ago for saying I'd make no apologies. We have only one truly sacred obligation, to prepare and equip those we send to war and care for them and their families when they come home and when they don't. That's why I'm so proud they've written and signed the PACT Act. One of the most significant laws ever, helping veterans and their families exposed to toxic materials like burnt pits and Asian orange. I was around during the Vietnam War. It's hard. Nobody was able to prove that their illness was the consequence of Agent Orange. And no one was able to prove initially that because they lived in burn pits, like my son lived next to in Iraq for a year, that is the cause of their illness. But because of the PACT Act, a surviving spouse with two children is now eligible for a stipend of about $3,000 a month. And those children who lost a, a parent are eligible for tuition benefits to go to college and to get job training. It's already helping over one million veterans and their families just so far. Well, I love them, and I'm, I'm so proud of my son's service. We get it. But guess who doesn't get it and doesn't respect our veterans? We know from his own chief of staff, the four-star General John Kelly, that Trump, when in Europe, would not go to the grave sites in one of the in France, the brave service members who gave their lives to this country, he called them suckers and losers. Who in the hell does he think he is? Who does he think he is? There's no words for a person. They are not the words of a person not worthy of being commander-in-chief, period.
Not then, not now, and not ever. I mean that. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Just as no commander in chief should ever bow down to a dictator the way Trump bows down to Putin. I never have, and I promise you, Kamala Harris will never do it. We'll never bow down. When Trump left office, Europe and NATO was in tatters. Not a joke. America first doctrine changed our whole image in the world. Well, I spent, they gave the hours, about 190 hours, some total, with my counterparts or heads of state in Europe to strengthen NATO. We did. We united Europe like it hadn't been united for years adding Finland and Sweden to NATO. <laughs> Ten days before he died, Henry Kissinger called and said, not since, not since Napoleon has Europe not looked over their shoulder at Russia with dread until now, until now. Well, guess what? Putin thought he'd take Kyiv in three days. Three years later, Ukraine is still free. When I came to office, the conventional wisdom was that China would inevitably surpass the United States. They haven't noticed. No one's saying that now. And we'll keep working to bring hostages home and end the war in Gaza and bring peace and security to the Middle East. As you know, I wrote a peace treaty for Gaza. A few days ago, I put forward a proposal that brought us closer to doing that than we've done since October 7th. We're working around the clock, my Secretary of State, to prevent a wider war and reunite hostages with their families and surge humanitarian health and food assistance into Gaza now. <laughs> to end the civilian suffering of the Palestinian people. And finally, finally, finally deliver a ceasefire and end this war. Those, those protesters out in the street, they have a point. A lot of innocent people are being killed on both sides. Just as we worked around the clock to bring home wrongfully detained Americans and others from Russia in one of the most complicated swaps in history, but they're home. Come and I are going to keep working to bring all Americans wrongfully defamed around the world home. I mean it. Folks, I've got five months left in my presidency. I've got a lot to do. I intend to get it done. It's, the, it's been the honor of my lifetime to serve as your president. I love the job, but I love my country more. I love my country more. And all this talk about how I'm angry at all those people who said I should step down, that's not true. I love my country more, and we need to preserve our democracy. In 2024, we need you to vote. We need you to keep the Senate. We need you to win back the House of Representatives. And above all, 
We need you to beat Donald Trump. And elect Kamala and Tim President and Vice President of the United States of America. Look, they'll continue to lead America forward, creating more jobs, standing up for workers, growing the economy, lower the cost to American families so they just have a little more breathing room. We made incredible process, progress. We have more work to do. And Kamala and Tim will continue to take on corporate greed and bring down cost of food. They'll keep taking on big farm and making insulin $35 a month, not just for seniors, but for everyone in America. And capping prescription drug costs, a total of $2,000, not just for seniors, but for everyone. And folks, that's going to save America again tens of billions of dollars. Folks, they'll make housing more affordable. Building 3 million new homes, providing $25,000 down payment assistance for the first time home buyer. More than the 10 we approved. Donald Trump wants a new tax on imported goods, food, gas, clothing, and more. You know what that would cost the average family, according to the experts? $3,900 a year in a tax. No, that's a fact. Kamala and Tim will make the child care tax rate a permanent. <laughs> Lifting millions of children out of poverty and helping millions of families get ahead. But you know what Trump has? He put the he created the largest debt any president had in four years with his $2 trillion tax cut for the wealthy. Well, Trump has a new plan. He wants to provide a $5 billion tax cut for corporations of the very wealthy. Put it, read it, put us further in debt. And folks, you know we have a thousand trillion, we have a thousand billionaires in America. You know what their average tax rate they pay? 8.2%. If we just increase our taxes, we proposed the 25 percent, which isn't the highest tax rate even, it would raise 500 billion new dollars over 10 years. And they'd still be very wealthy. Look, Kamala and Tim are going to make them pay their fair share. They'll protect Social Security and Medicare. Trump wants to cut Social Security and Medicare. Kamala and Tim will protect your freedom. They'll protect your vote to right, your right to vote. They'll protect your civil rights. And you know Trump will do everything to ban abortion nationwide. Oh, he will. You know Kamala and Tim will do everything they possibly can. That's why you have to elect a Senate and a House to restore Roe v. Wade. The ancient Greeks taught us that character is destiny. Character is destiny. For me and Jill, we know Kamal and Doug are people of character. It's been our honor to serve alongside them. And we know that Tim and Gwen Waltz are also people of great character. Selecting Kamala was the very first decision I made before I became, when I became our nominee. And it was the best decision I made my whole career. We've not only gotten to know each other, we've become close friends. She's tough, she's experienced, and she has enormous integrity, enormous integrity.
Her story represents the best American story. And like many of our best presidents, she was also vice president. That's a joke. But she'll be a president our children can look up to. She'll be a president respected by world leaders because she already is. She'll be a president we can all be proud of. And she will be an historic president who puts her stamp on America's future. This will be the first presidential election since January 6th. On that day, we almost lost everything about who we are as a country. And that threat, this is not hyperbole, that threat is still very much alive. Donald Trump says he will refuse to accept the election result if he loses again. Think about that. He means it. Think about that. He's promising a bloodbath if he loses, in his words. And that he'll be a dictator on day one, in his own words. By the way, this sucker means it. No, I'm not joking. Think about it. Anybody else said that in the past, you'd think he was crazy. He is crazy, but you'd think it was an exaggeration. But he means it. We can't let that happen. Folks, all of us carry a special obligation. Independents, Republicans, Democrats. We saved democracy in 2020, and now we must save it again in 2024. The vote of each of us cast this year will determine whether democracy and freedom will prevail. It's that simple. It's that serious. And the power is literally in your hands. History is in your hands, not hyperbole. It's in your hands. America's future is in your hands. Let me close with this. Nowhere else in the world could a kid with a stutter and modest beginnings in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and Claymont, Delaware, grow up to sit behind the Resolute desk in the Oval Office. That, that's because America is and always has been a nation of possibilities. Possibilities. We must never lose that. Never. Kamala and Tim understand that this nation must continue to be a place of possibilities, not just for the few of us, but for all of us. But join me and promising your whole heart to this effort. And where my heart will be, I promise I'll be the best volunteer Harris and Waltz has Cam have ever seen. Each of us has a part in the American story. For me and my family, there's a song that means a lot to us that captures the best of who we are as a nation. The song is called American Anthem. There's one verse that stands out, and I can't sing worth a damn, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> I'll just quote it. The work and prayers of centuries have brought us to this day. What shall our, leg our legacy be? What will our children say? Let me know in my heart when my days are through, America, America, I gave my best to you. mistakes in my career, but I gave my best to you. For 50 years, like many of you, 
I've given my heart and soul to our nation. And I've been blessed a million times in return for the support of the American people. I've either been the, too young to be in the Senate because I wasn't 30 yet, and too old to stay as president. <laughs> but I hope you know how grateful I am to all of you. I can honestly say, and I mean this from the bottom, give me my word as a Biden, I can honestly say I'm more optimistic about the future than I was when I was elected as a 29-year-old United States Senator. I mean it. <laughs> Folks, we just have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there's nothing we cannot do when we do it together. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops.